The logic of reversing given array elements without using additional array is quite straightforward. It is very easy. I demonstrate this thing using two examples. In example 1, I'll take odd number of values and in example 2, I'll take even number of values. Let's start with example 1. In example 1, I have taken odd number of values. That means the total number of values are 5. Index position starting from 0 to 4. To do this, I need to maintain total number of times. It's a simple value, fd, the value that is pointing to forward direction, the value that is pointing to reverse direction, fd and rd. Let us initialize these three values. Number of times that we have to iterate to finish this job, we need to calculate. The formula is quite simple, n by 2. In our case, the total number of values in example 1 are 5. 5 by 2 means 2.5. 0.5 is ignored imagining that we are working with integers. So the value is 2. 5 by 2 is 2.5. 0.5 is ignored because I will be considering an integral part. So the total number of times we need to perform the iteration C is 2. The initial value of FD, let us initialize it with 0. An initial value of RD is nothing but the last value 4. The logic is quite straightforward here. Whenever I wanted to iterate the things, what I do is that I will compare my FD value with number of times. If FD value is less than number of times, then I can proceed with the logic. So 0 is less than 2, condition is true. Now when condition is true, what I do is that I will try to reverse the value pointing to FD and the value pointing to RD. RD is pointing to 78 fd is pointing to 104, these two values will swap. 78 comes here and 104 comes here. And then what I do is that I will increment the fd value by 1 and I will decrement rd value by 1. So fd became 1 now, rd became 3. I will test the condition. Is fd value less than number of times? Yes, condition is true. When condition is true, again proceed with the job, same job same swapping. Swap the values of FD and RD. FD value is pointing to now 14 because FD value is 1. The value at 1 is 14. 14 will be swapped with the value that is pointing pointed with RD. RD is pointing to value 54. 54 comes here and 14 comes here. And then FD value become 2. RD value is decremented. So RD value becomes 2. FD value I am testing with the number of times. 2 is not less than 2, condition failed, so we will come out of the loop. Our array is already in reverse now. Our, our array is already reversed. The moment we come out of this process, whenever this condition fails, we will come out of this process and if we look at our array, array is already in reverse. Now the same example, we will work it out, we will just justify whether it is working finally when we have even number of elements. In example 2, I have 4 values. That means even number of value. The number of times I am going to calculate. Number of times is nothing but n by 2. The total number of values here are 4. 4 by 2 means 2. fd is initialized to 0, the very first value. And rd is initialized to 3. We will proceed the things now. fd 0 is less than 2. Condition is true. So, you now you reverse the values what are the value that is pointed by fd? You need to swap the value with the value that is pointed with rd. rd is pointing to 19, fd is pointing to 45, 19 comes here and 45 comes here. And then fd is incremented by 1, rd is decremented by 1, that means 3 becomes 2. 1, the condition I am testing, 1 is less than 2, condition is true. When condition is true, what are the value that is pointed by fd? has to be swapped with the value that is pointed by rd. fd is pointing 89 and rd is pointing to 74. 74 comes here and 89 comes. There afterwards fd becomes 2 and rd becomes 1. To proceed for the next iteration, the condition has to be tested. 2 is not less than 2. Condition failed and you will come out of this process. After coming out of this process, if you look at your array, your array is already reversed. To do this thing, you can very easily observe that no additional array is used. Within the array itself, we can nicely reverse the elements. Let's start writing program. Let me create the variables which are required. Let me take an array of 10 elements. I'll ask user to enter the number of values inside the array. 
So at a maximum of 10, user's input can be anything. It could be 5 number of values or 4 number of values. That value I'll store in a variable called as n. For iteration purpose, I'll take the value i, rd and fd. Now I'll ask user to enter number of values number of values or number of elements. I will store that value entered by the user in a variable called as n. After knowing the n value, now it is time to initialize your fd and rd. fd is equals to 0, rd equals to n minus 1 rd which is pointing to the last position initially it is pointing to last position there afterwards rd decrements and fd increments let me ask user to enter values based on the n value that is provided by the user read the values for i equals to i less than n i plus plus. Read the values, put those values nicely into the array. If n is 5, 5 values will be stored in an array starting from index position from 0 to 4. Once after getting the values in an array, now we got fd value, we got rd value and we got all the values into the array. It is time to use the logic to reverse the array. For swapping purpose, for swapping purpose, I need an additional variable called as temp. This is the main logic. I will iterate based on the condition, my fd value should be always less than n by 2. The number of times that I wanted to iterate is n by 2 number of times, which is always tested with fd value. Whenever the condition is true, I will get inside. I need to swap the values that are pointing to rd and fd. So in temp, I will keep the value that is pointed by rd. In a of rd, I will store the value that is pointed by fd. Now in a of rd, I got the fd value. In a of fd, I will get the value that is previously stored in temp. That was the previous value of rd. Swapping is done. Once after swapping is completed, now it is time to update fd. fd is incremented by 1 and rd is decremented by 1. That's all. This job is done which is based on n by 2. Whatever the value that you have taken for n value, based on that n value, the total number of iterations will be done. In case if your n value is 10, 5 times this will be executed. In case if your n value is 5, 5 by 2 is 2.5. So 2 times this job will be executed. Finally, display the array. Printf after reversing array is for i equals to 0 i less than n i plus plus some space a of i this is to print to show the final values after reversing and if you wanted to show and it would be better let us see what are the values before reversing and after reversing separately. So let me copy this piece of code and before the logic is applied here, I just wanted to display what are the values that we had before, before reversing array is. I am displaying the same thing and after reversing whatever the values that, that are reversed in the same array values I am printing. Let us execute this program now. reverse array.c is the file name compilation is successful let's execute it dot slash a dot out total number of elements let it be 5 i'll randomly give some elements you can see that before reversing the values that i have entered are 12 5 6 10 4 so after reversing the array should become 4, 10, 6, 5, 12. Fantastic.
Our approach has worked for odd number of elements. Now let's test for even number of elements. Number of elements 4. Any random values you can give. 4 values I have given because the total number of values that I have taken are 4. Before reversing, what are the values that I have given? 10, 4, 5, 78. Only 4 even number of values I have given. After reversing, the array became 78, 5, 4, 10. Our approach is working for these two different inputs. That means when input size is even and input size is odd, our approach is working. It means that it will definitely work for any number of elements. That's it. We are done.